Everybody's been asking what happened to Project YJ. Well, it's right here, except it's not mine anymore. I'll tell you what happened. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for checking it out. This is formerly my Project YJ Jeep, which if you watched, we wrapped it up. It was amazing. We found this thing in my friend's junkyard. No! Oh, no crusher! crusher! Save it! Worked on it a bunch with some friends. And of course, it was at the Kenwood Rod Shop with my friend Randy Allgood. And we're in his former shop where we shot the TV show Lost in Transmission that we did for History Channel in between seasons of Top Gear. So I spent a lot of time under that lift. You would say working on but let's be honest. Most of the time, I was just, I was just standing around because I'm good at that. But uh, here's the thing. This is the Project YJ with a few improvements because I actually traded it to Randy for this special ride that I remember being here. He bought it right at the end of Lost in Transmission and I had all these great memories of it, so I wanted to get it. But let me show you. He's done a few things since it left me. Uh, it's got a little diamond plate here at the bottom, the chrome side steps. He put the new chrome tops on. It now has everything on the inside. We're talking carpet, it's got the back seat, it's got an Alpine radio. I mean, this thing's jamming. Oh, the steering wheel, the top. I just want you to know, I think when I traded it to him, I didn't realize it could look this cool with just a little bit more effort, but here's what I'll say. Randy has always been such a great friend to me. Um, anytime I need help with anything, anything in the world, He's the first person to say, I'm on my way over to be there. So when he said, I actually like this thing, I was like, this thing is destined to be with Randy. So I love it. Knowing that he cruises around in this thing when the weather's nice is awesome. But he did say, oh, he's even got the tire cover. Come on. He did say I could take it for one last drive. So let's take this bad boy off road and I'll show you the new project. Hop in. Coolest part about overalls, right? Just move your stuff around. Boop. I wanna give a shout out to my friends at Rugged Ridge. If there weren't companies like Rugged Ridge and Napa and Summit that made all of the parts that you need for these, it wouldn't be like Legos like it is. Like it's automotive Legos. This thing's so funny. You know what's so funny about this Jeep is if y'all remember when I first found it, it was sitting in a junkyard where it had been for 10 years, 10 years, sitting in a junkyard, not running, it had been towed there, a glove box full of tickets, and now it's this cool running, driving thing that got saved from the junkyard and got a second life. And that's what I'm gonna do with the project that I'm about to show you. Now, when I got this idea, I thought, man, I always wanted this thing. Wouldn't it be cool if I could do the same thing to it that I did with this Jeep? I haven't seen it in person in a few years. So just keep that in mind. This may not be as good of an idea as I once thought, but it might be better. Ah. Oh. That thing's fun. All right, are you guys ready to see it? Now this is a little something that Randy bought at the end of Lost in Transmission. We thought maybe we'll figure out how to fix it up at some point. He was gonna do something cool for him. But now I have traded Project YJ, that's right, the Junkyard Jeep for, ta-da! Look at all this, huh? Look at all this. I know what you're thinking, wow, where'd you find such a gym? This is a 1956 Ferd F100. And I know you're thinking, wait, are those your old wheels? That's right. On Lost in Transmission, I built Rachel a 1949 Chevy pickup. These are Detroit steel wheels uh, that I had painted the same like buttercream, but we ended up using a different set of wheels on the truck, we changed the diameter. So these are brand new, brand new tires. They've only been sitting out here since 2012, 15, 2015. So maybe time for tires too, but uh, check it out. The doors were school bus yellow. Um, and now I'm not gonna lie y'all, it's a little bit of a project, but I just wanna remind you that Jeep 
looked about this bad. Well, it had a windshield, but it was just like a suggestion. But uh, let me show you under the hood. This is a 4.6 liter V8. I think they call this the modular V8. This actually came from a Lincoln. I think same for the rear end. Now the truck has a front end swap underneath it. This is a Mustang II style front end. So like Heights is a company that makes a, a really great one. I don't know exactly what this one is just yet. Uh, it looks like they did most of the work to get it on, which is why the truck is so low on the front. Uh, probably going to need to just go over that, maybe replace the bushings. Uh, the V8's pretty solid. Now, it looks like the wiring is mostly there. I realize that this seems crazy. Like, that's a running, driving Jeep that I paid Randy to help me finish, and then I traded it to Randy for this, which he'll have to help me finish this, so I'm going to have to pay him. So really, it's a brilliant thing. But again, uh, he's one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, and I think this is going to be a perfect project to tinker with a little bit. Like, I don't want to make this thing perfect. I want to make it a beater old truck, so I'm going to do some fun stuff to kind of get it to where I need to, to where it's safe and functional to drive and probably a, a good time you know i think this is the same engine that was in my 97 thunderbird see in georgia we have this thing called the hope scholarship where if you get a b average in high school uh the lottery essentially pays for you to go to a state school so i was like hey mom and dad how about since you don't have to pay for my school we use that money to put towards a cool car and they're like okay let's look into it well i wanted a supra right 98 supra that wasn't going to happen twin turbo royal sapphire pearl then i was like how about a acura integra type r right wouldn't that be incredible my dad said no i was like okay uh well let's go find some so i was looking at everything and we found this 97 ford thunderbird lx 4.6 v8 my dad's like this is a great car it'll be safe or whatever and i was like oh, i guess it's pretty pretty cool it was like driving a lazy boy uh and it was one one of the worst cars i've ever owned then when I lost the Hope Scholarship uh, because I took astronomy, which I thought was like, oh, cool stars. It's not. It's just physics in the sky. Then I had to sell it to pay for my school. Started the cover band with some friends, legend has it, and then that's how I paid for my school. And my beater accord that I had after that. Nonetheless, these engines are fine. I think what we'll do is I'm going to get the truck home, start working on it, kind of take a few things off, get it cleaned up. Now, in a lot of ways, it might be easier to call like blueprint, get a 302 or 351, pop that in there and just make it easy peasy. On the other hand, if we could get a wiring harness, we got the computer, it might just fire up and be perfect. So it's kind of going to be trying to figure out exactly what we want to do. So back here, we have a ton of parts like the front uh, fascia is here, the new bedsides someone's bell housing i don't think that's for this there's a couple grills um and again i think you know what we're seeing with the blazer is that mix of like new and old so a little bit of patina uh and a little bit of quality underneath i think that's kind of my perfect mix so i don't know what color i'm gonna paint it just yet you might notice there are there's a little bit of a height disparity on the sides of how the frame is sitting currently there are these shackles on the leaf springs and one is up and one is down so it's like it's popping and locking, but it's just it's just locked. Yeah, here she is, 56 F100. Tell me in the comments below, what would you do to it? Should I paint it? Should I go crazy, mild? I don't think I want to bag this one. I think it's just going to be static and low. I want a truck that I can actually like use and go to Home Depot and load it full of Ryobi stuff and come on home. So, um, ooh, that neon green color on Ryobi would be a cool color, wouldn't it? I got some ideas. White walls? No white walls? What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Also, if you think I'm crazy, I guess write that too. It's cool, right? If you see Randy in it, wave to him. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends. See you next time.